curious is, if God has called you into ministry, have you ever asked yourself that question? Is he asking you to step out in what seems to be a huge leap of faith? Is God calling you to plant a church? Though all Christians really were called to serve the cause of Christ, God does seem to call certain people to serve the church and his causes in a special and even a very unique way. The scriptures also point to the truth that we find our peace when we're in God's will. But how do we know if God is calling? Is it possible to discern the precise will of God in our lives? I believe that the answer to those last two questions is yes, absolutely. But getting to the yes, if we're honest, is more art than it is science. Paul reminds us in Ephesians 2.10 that there is an expectation to how we're to live our lives. God intentionally has prepared works for each and every one of us individually to give our time, talents, treasure, and touch really to the completion of each of these specific tasks. I want to suggest to you today five steps that you can implement in your life when it comes to discerning God's call in your life. The first step is just simply to take time to pray. Begin by praying for wisdom. James reminds us that anytime we face challenges and feel inadequate to discern the wise choice ahead, that we're to ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. In asking for heavenly wisdom, we must also come to trust God is gracious, that He's willing to help us find the answers to our prayers. To pray to know the call of God includes asking for wisdom, but also asking for the faith to trust in the call of God. The second step to discerning the, 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 the work of God in your life is just through the study of His Word. To study God's Word is really the idea to immerse yourself in it. God is never going to contradict himself, and much about life, it really is already revealed in the scriptures. To immerse yourself in the word of God is also to understand and come to accept God's assessment of ourselves, his assessment of humanity, and even his assessment of the world. The hope of this practice is to learn to see things through God's eyes so that we learn to value the things that he values. The third step of implementation is just seek godly counsel. I love the verse Proverbs 15, 22. It reminds us that in the counsel of others, we actually find wisdom. In other words, seeking good counsel from trusted confidants, it really is an important step that should never be ignored when searching God's calling on our lives. Those that know us best and love us despite our shortcomings help us gain a realistic view of ourselves. They help us gain a realistic view of our gifts, our weaknesses, our strengths. Are you willing to open the door for others to speak on what they see in you and really even how it fits to the specific situations? Allow them the freedom to speak truthfully. Matthew 18 verses 15 through 16 tells us where here we see Jesus lays out instructions for confronting sin among believers, saying, but if he does not listen... Take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I believe the same applies when it comes to God confirming his calling in our lives. He'll often confirm or establish a matter by two or three witnesses, whether they be verses from scripture, advice from a pastor, or just a well-respected friend. Or, or it may be in a non-compromising circumstance. Now, through seeking godly counsel, you're also taking another critical step in confirming the call of God in your life. The next step for implementing and deciphering the will of God in your life is just simply look for doors. What I found to be true is that the door God opens will require you to live dependently on Him. God will never give us something that is going to alienate us from Him or move us to believe we no longer need Him. Therefore, as God is working in us, through us, and around us, he sometimes chooses to help direct our paths through the opening and closing of doors. Acts 16 is a great example of this. Paul's journey to Macedonia, it serves as a great example of God opening and closing doors so that ultimately his own will is the one that's accomplished. From personal experience, 
I've seen God close doors to one vision just to open up another door to a greater vision. If a door is hard to pry open, let me encourage you, be sure to check yourself that you're not trying to open a door that God doesn't want you to open. The last step, a very important step, is just simply listening to the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. Is it possible to hear God? Jesus told his closest followers that when the Spirit of truth comes, he'll guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Spirit speaks to our hearts. It leads us in the right direction when we learn to listen. Sometimes we're just too busy to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Bible tells us that he is gentle, that he is patient. He's patiently waiting for us to hunger for his presence in our lives. Being quiet before the Lord, it's more than just talking. It's actually the idea of quieting our anxious thoughts, meditating on his word as you wait to hear from the Holy Spirit. The important thing is to put ourselves in a place where we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. We need to find a good place where we can sit before God, uninterrupted by other distractions. Wait patiently. Don't rush. Trust with expectancy that at the right time, the Holy Spirit will speak, and you'll know God's call on your life. Honestly and ultimately, Following the, God, the, the call of God requires faith. However, the five steps that we outline above, it's easy for us to see that it isn't blind faith by which we walk. Mm-hmm.